seconds, pull back. Don't set the hook 10 times. Just do it once. Push off that side. You gotta keep, uh, we got barbless hooks, so if you don't keep tension, you'll lose it. So, yeah, just everybody kind of spread out. Give me one guy back to this corner here. Now, casting in this boat, the best way to do it is bring everything over to the right. And then when I say go, you go. Okay, go. All right, now just hold your rod tip low. Just let it drag. If it goes down for more than two seconds, pull back. Go on, fish on. Everybody in, everybody in. Fish on, everybody in. Reel, reel, reel. Good, good. So we just got out here for another adventure with real time fishing. First cast, our announcer Dave Mason. Nice looking fish, Dave. The boat, edge of the boat will cut the line. Edge of the boat will cut the line, so if it goes under the boat, you gotta dip your tip. Good for that. Time for the Northwest Fishing Reports. Come along as we travel to hidden gems and fishing hotspots around the Northwest. You'll see a little of everything as we fish with top guides on their home waters and bring you the latest in tackle, tactics, and techniques to help you catch more fish. With Aaron Borg, Mike Carey, and Rob Holman. Presented by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. Good morning, everybody. Rob Holman with Northwest Fishing Reports. We're on the Snake River with Toby White and Rick Claffey, Real Time Fishing. We got some special guests from Larry H. Miller Toyota in Spokane. We've got Chase Mason and Dave Mason. Dave's our announcer. It's an exciting show. Hillary's on the camera today. Keep watching, it's going to get better. over to the right here and get ready to cast. Hold your rod tip low. Let it drag. Don't jig it. Hold it still. Here we go. Here we go. Fish. Another in. Reel up, fish Reel. on! Hey. Oh boy, look at this one. He's shooting toward the middle of the river. You gotta start to lift him to Rick if you can. Yep. Fish, can't beat that, huh guys? Took a yarn ball with eggs. It's about a 10 pound female Chinook, and it's a keeper. Nice, uh, nice fish. Beautiful. Here's our angler right here. Hot angler. He's the man. We're gonna put this one to sleep, bleed it out, put it on ice. Northwest Fishing Reports. Day on the water. Real time fishing and Toyota. We got Toyota today. These are all Toyota guys. Two casts, two fish. One steelhead, one salmon. We're gonna do another drift. See if we can't go three for three. 
Here's our baits today. That one took a, a little yarn ball and a salmon row. Cured uh, was Potsky fire cure. Works really awesome. Steelhead and salmon will eat it. That was that uh, salmon's uh, breakfast of choice. Pretty nice, man. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> looks like candy. My kids always sure. like, that looks, can I eat that, yeah, Dad? No, don't eat it. <laughs> right. Try it. Yeah, I would I like, like to see him try it. Is, is that your go-to out here? Yeah, I'd say so. Yarn ball eggs, it's, it's about the best. The first one took a puff ball, which is a styrofoam colored ball. Mm -hmm. that was, the steelhead took that, but that salmon, he took, uh, they, he took the yarn ball. And in the same row for both. Doesn't matter what you're targeting there. Yeah, yeah. We kind of uh, you can run several different cures, mm -hmm. um, and this cure is a neutral cure, which both fish will eat it. But you can like some cures are specifically for salmon, some are specifically for steelhead. Sure. Yeah, this one you can multi-purpose. Right, right. All right, let's do it again. In this little hole here. We got fast water here, soft water here. It's what I call a traveling lane. And the mouth of the little river here comes in called the Grand Round. The fish uh, will kind of keg up here, decide uh, you know which way they're going, if they're gonna go up uh, up the Grand Round, up the snake, up the salmon. Um, so it's a very popular area. There's four other guide boats in here right now and sometimes Sometimes hundreds of fish will come out. Fish on! Oh, he missed it, he missed it. Sometimes hundreds of fish will come out of this one hole. And uh, anyway, uh, yeah, we uh, that was our opportunity for three for three right there. We missed that one. But uh, so far we got two, two for two. Well, Back with more Northwest Fishing Reports right after this. Keeper. All right. Beautiful. That one uh, ate ate the. Uh, Should we that one that? ate the yarn egg combo. The so salmon are liking that yarn egg combo. Measure. No, that's for sure. Yeah. No doubt. Greg, we're gonna hold this sucker up. Well, we're gonna try. Have Rick hit it again. He, Rick hit it with his. There Rick, put the rocks in your purse and hit it. Uh, this is a jack salmon. This is a Chinook that's under 24 inches. They're a big herd of the run majority of the time. And up here we can keep wild or native six uh, six jacks per year. They opened it up for that. And the, how long have these guys been in the ocean? Uh, just one year. Oh, they always <laughs> used to think that jacks would spawn other jacks, but they say, there's recent studies, they say a jack can actually spawn a 60 pound salmon. So there you go. Wow. Nice little fish. <laughs>
job, go. Chase. Whew. That's a chromer. Yeah, about 480 miles that fish made it that far. That's a great color for this yeah. far up the snake. Wow. The log fish are native. Yeah, I gotta put them all back. Fish! Rob, you just got bit. I thought so. Pulling them up, pulling them out of the mouth all morning. There we go. No. Rock. But I like your enthusiasm. I like it. That's a handy little trick there, Rick. Every trick in the book. That's why we call him Tricky Ricky. Oh. <laughs> tricky, tricky. What kind of brand are those zip ties? <laughs> Real time brand zip ties we use to hold our eggs on our line. So if you see here on your egg loop, pull that out. And we took a real time brand zip tie, put it on there. Take your eggs, cinch her in there, and it helps hold those eggs on. The line doesn't pull through, so they last took three, little, four, uh, four more casts than normal. Five cents a zip tie. <laughs> Minimum three. We got him. Mission! Everybody in. Everybody in. Whoa! Yeah! Whoa! There we go. Net! Take a step forward. There you go. Beautiful. Wow. Look at the color on that. Nice steelhead. Male. It's got, you see how it's got more color than the uh, first one we got was a, a female, a little more silver. This one's a male. It took a uh, yarn ball, egg, and corky. Okay. Beautiful fish. Follow. to the right. It's a good system you got here. Yeah, this is mainly, this is the uh, super bait pro troll setup for down at uh, Hanford Reach. And we might be going back down there uh, next week. So we haven't changed over yet. Normally these are all full of uh, our different size shot. This is a 16 here. Depending on the water uh, conditions. If there's a swift current, we go heavier. If there's a, a lighter current, we'll go down to maybe even four, four shot. But, and a uh, four shot, what's that? Uh, a couple ounces? That's probably a, uh, yeah, two ounces. I, I think you can say that one of these shot is about a three sixteenths or quarter ounce. Gotcha. So a four shot could even be an ounce, but yeah, yeah, or close to ounce, it. ounce and a half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we just take a shrink wrap, wrap them up with a swivel on there, and it. I like it. Again. Yeah. I think that uh, do you, that smooth shrink wrap does that help with snags and things? Yeah, a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then and you don't have to mess with that lead, unwrapping the lead and punching it, mm -hmm. getting it all over your hands on your baits. Mm -hmm. so it's a lot nicer. Right. Very slick. Another top secret real time That's tip. That's right. And the zip ties. That's why you guys rock. Here you go. Up, 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 up. Oh, everybody no. in, everybody in, everybody in, everybody in. Beautiful. Nice. Nice. I think it's a big steelhead. Real time fishing right there. You slide that towel back. There we go. Beauty. Awesome. See you later. Woo! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fish face, like he's not caught a 
fish. Yeah, He's going to start moping. time toby two drifts two fish two casts two fish one steelhead one salmon you really want to use that rod no, no, they're messing no, with sorry. you toby <laughs> you're doing so good toby. <laughs> Lake Samish, and we just wanted to show you that it's you could fish this with a small boat and kayak quite easily because we're just a few hundred yards off the boat ramp and we've got a significant number of kokanee already on the meter. So a great opportunity for small boat, little electric motor, kayak, canoe, you know anything where you don't have the big horsepower to make a run across the lake. The lead line rigs typically outfish the downriggers. Um, as we move later into the season where the fish start getting much deeper, it, it's more challenging. But the lead line works great. In fact, our biggest fish in this lake was in the fall, and it was a lead line fish. So you're not a stacker fan in the, in the spring? Um, I'm not, but everybody has their own preference. That didn't take too long, Randy. No, it didn't. RC's coconut flowers. In the net. One down, nine to go. So today we're using the Aeroflash uh, Dodgers made by half fast Dodgers made by Polson. Excellent little Dodgers. Uh, some home tied coconut flies. And I'm tipping the bait or the, the hooks with the Play-Doh worms or Play-Doh maggots and a piece of corn that's been cured in tuna juice and a little bit of garlic. So you got the you've got the maggot on the inside hook and the corn on the trailing hook. That is correct. Coconut on? Yeah. So we have Lake Samish. Oh, there we go. It's actually kind of two lakes in one. There's the big lake here that we're fishing, and a little later we'll show you the small lake. We're going to do a little heisting. Boink. Flying Kokanee. Flying Kokanee. So they're probably running about 11 inches. This is the class that we're catching. There he goes. What's really cool about this lake is it's really close to the boat ramp. I mean, we're practically throw a rock at the launch. And okay. we're fishing coconut. That's a little better.
That's a nice fish. Okay, we're now on the west lobe or west arm of Lake Sammamish. It's a smaller, much deeper portion of the lake. You access your little isthmus type channel back behind us. Uh, come up here quite a bit, a couple reasons. The freeway noise is gone. It's basically you, your boat, and nature. And to that note, there's kokanee jumping all over the place. And then secondly, a lot of times if the main lake is windy, uh, this lake is quite calm, or at least the run of the wind is broken up, and it, it's not as difficult to control your boat. Right off the bat, we move and we've got a fish. So that didn't take long at all, moving from the big lake to the little lake. I'm just going to hoist. Now, was that at two colors? That was at two colors, and uh, nice shiny kokanee. Well, Randy, you uh, told me we'd have quick limits, and we did. A lot of nice fish, bright, shiny kokanee, and boy, what a beautiful lake to fish on. It's so peaceful back here. Yeah, it's very nice, and you know, with the the, the large lake was kind of windy, and we got over here, and it's, it's dead calm. It's very peaceful. You don't have the freeway noise. And it, basically, since we launched the boat this morning, went gear down. We've had fish on the entire time. Yep. So it's just it's a quality little fishery. As we move into fall, these fish will be two, three, maybe four inches larger, um, and they and they really do school up well in the fall. So it's it's really fun kind of target fishery. So we'll go from 12, 13 inch fish to 16, 17 inch fish. So. Everyone, go get your AIS certification for your boat and head on out here and get some of these beautiful kokanee. Randy, thanks for taking me out today. Enjoyable and my pleasure. We'll see you guys on the water and online.